Director of Communications for Professionals Beyond the Game, Erica Singleton. But normally, guys, when you see us, we are she's atten- tuning in via Zoom. She is live in the studio with me this morning. Good morning, Erica. How are you doing and the good people over at Professionals Beyond the Game this oh, morning? Oh, Tracy, I am amazing. And I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we have been hoping to see each other in person for so long. Oh I'm fully vaccinated. I'm getting out the house a little bit. <laughs> I came into the studio, so no, I'm excited. We we are fantastic. We were out at the Holy Strokes Golf Tournament yesterday, yes. um, uh, hanging out with uh, one of our uh, we longtime workers, classmates as well from Winthrop, Pierre Wooten, uh, and he has an organization, Premier Christian Events. So yes. they were out putting that on. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's been fantastic. We're uh, gearing up. And then I cannot wait to talk to today's guest. Oh, my um, gosh. If I can just kind of get us jumping. Go ahead and, and get going. us jumping. Go ahead and put us so in the game. I was super excited, and I knew he was somebody we needed to talk to because uh, his book dedication goes, this is dedicated to anyone who feels lost. I wrote this book with the intention of helping you speed up the process of finding your way and discovering what you truly want out of life. What we want for athletes is for them to be able to figure out what to do in their lives after sports. And it is a time that so many people are lost and not really sure what to do. Schools get their sweat equity out of them, but they don't always prepare them for the next level. And so um, he is telling people how they can thrive after sports. And we are so excited to have him today. Hi, Taj. Taj. (laughs) Hi. Hello, ladies. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me just say before I say anything else, I love your studio setup. Y'all are doing it big. Y'all are real professional. You're making me want to snap my game up. I got to get the studio together. But it's great to be here with you this morning. Oh, we are so excited and so thankful for your time and all of the good work that you're doing, my friend. Um, Taj, go ahead and let people know. Give us a little bit more background about yourself, what you're doing. We can't wait to hear your story. Absolutely. Uh, so I played football at Stony Brook University. And uh, I played corner and safety, just in case there's any DVs on the line, in case anybody cares. And uh, when I came home, although I didn't have a chance to play at the next level, I really, really struggled to map out my next steps. So it was a very difficult time for me because I'm the first person in my family to go to college, let alone get a full ride scholarship. So when I came home, you know, I was thinking somebody was just going to be waiting on me with a six figure job just because I have my education paid for it. Obviously not the case. So I came back home from Stony Brook, which is in, in Long Island, New York, came back home to Southern California, where I'm from. And I found myself in a very weird spot because I'm back in my childhood bedroom, you know, after having been away on scholarship for four years. And here I am just waking up, looking at my little Pop Warner trophies every day. You know, I go from having my own house out in New York to my mom's telling me to take out the trash again. And the reason I share that is because so many athletes go through this. You you spend so much time either collegiately or professionally. And then there's this fall from grace where you just find yourself a lot of times back where you started, you know, back in your hometown neighborhood or just really starting from the ground up. So to make a long story short, I really struggled to find my way. I had no idea what I wanted to do because I had just been tied to football player for so many years. Uh, Eventually, after some time, I did carve out a a great career for myself in the recruiting industry because I love working with people. I love helping people. And obviously, a lot of the skills that I got through recruiting, they helped me today in the work that I'm doing. And uh, eventually, I decided that I wanted to break away. Um, I had found sort of found my, my groove. You know, I was making good money. I was helping people. But I felt this call to do more. And what that more started to look like and take shape as was reaching back to the former athletes who had graduated after me. Um, and it started out with my school, but then it started to evolve and grow. And I started getting really serious and putting together some programming that I've been using really for the past four years to help athletes go from a place where they're lost and confused like I was and just trying to figure out who they are outside of the jersey and taking them from that place where they can start to I call it fire on all cylinders again, being excited for the fact that they have the next 60, 70, 80 years ahead of them to create and build and take that athletic mindset and put it into something else. So that's what I've been doing for the past four years. As you just mentioned, Erica, I came out with a book, uh, have a podcast called Thrive After Sports. I'm just on this mission trying to help as many former athletes as possible. I mean, and you firing all cylinders, you are, uh, uh, I mean, you're ambitious, 80 years afterwards <laughs> that's, that's over a hundred years 
you know, the wonders of modern medicine. You never know. I'm, I'm trying to break the 100 mark, you know? I understand it. I mean, athletes more so than anybody else are in prime condition for that type of thing. So uh, more power to you. I don't know if I have 80. But, I mean, honestly, what, what you're talking about is our mission at Professionals Beyond the Game. But really, mm. you, you took it another step. And so um, can you talk about the process? Because you also becoming an author. Uh, because a lot of people think they can write a book. A lot of people want to write a book. A lot of people judge books. Right. But really, how did you get there? <laughs> yes, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll start out by saying writing a book is not as challenging as you think. And I even want to, before I get into how it all happened, I want to start out with some words of encouragement for anyone who's thinking about writing a book. Make sure you get some guidance, but don't let, you know, trying to be a perfectionist hold you back. Like people need your message. People need to hear what you're talking about. So do what you need to do, get the right information and put the book out. Now, the way this came about for me was, it's so funny, ladies, when you're trying to help someone, you end up helping yourself. That's always how it works out. I had a guy I was working with. He was about five weeks into my program uh, and we had gotten really clear on what he wanted to do. He wanted to do some public speaking and he wanted to be an author and use the book as a way to become a speaker. So I have a lot of great people in my network. I reached out to the first the first woman I know who had a great book. Shout out to Joy Walker if she's listening to this. And her book is called Sets for Life. So I'm like, who did your book? This is a phenomenal book. I got blessed. She connected me with the number one self-publishing company in the world, self-published in 30 days. So I reach out to them. They get the book done for the, the, the former athlete I was working with. And then I hit it off with the owner. You know, it's a black-owned business. Uh, he's a former football player. He's about 12 years older than me. And I'm like, sir, and his name is Darren Palmer. I'm like, sir, I love the way your company operates. Can we create a referral system so that if I have any future athletes I'm working with, that I can connect you with them and you can help them tell their stories to the world as well. And he's like, absolutely, we can do that. And we'll start with you because you have a great story. <laughs> you should write a book and you need to tell your story to the world. And I'm like, sir, I appreciate that. But I'm really just focused on my coaching right now. You know, maybe I'll write a book once I'm you know, a little more established once I got some gray hairs in my beard that I just kind of, you know, I'm sitting on the mountaintop chilling. And he's like, that's great, Taj. You can write a book then, but you also should write a book now because you have so much knowledge and so many things you're doing that can help people. And he said, on top of that, you know, it's a great opportunity for you to go back and speak places because people are going to want to know about your book. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'll write the book. So I wrote the book. Um, and what I, I always tell people, the book is really my coaching program in book format. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was write an autobiography. I'm not Ray Lewis. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I, it's not to the point where I don't think people yet, notice I said yet, would want to know every detail about my life. But I wrote it so that a former athlete or anyone for that matter, because it came out around the time um, as, it came out in the middle of the pandemic. So there are a lot of people who are going through life transitions, mm -hmm. not just athletes. But my goal with the book was for someone to pick it up you know, be uncertain about the next steps of their lives and be able to read through it. And not not by me just saying, hey, follow these cookie cutter steps, but by them being able to discover for themselves some of the things that I'm sharing through my story and some of the things I've seen through my coaching and even giving them exercises to help them find clarity and, and find a reason to wake up every single day and be excited about what they're doing when they're jumping out of bed. So that's a little bit of backstory behind the book. And you've just kind of hit on a, really a lot of different points and topics throughout what you've been saying, the identity piece, but also the knowing and recognizing the call for more. What was that call like? As you said, you went back home and recognizing, wait, I'm no longer Taj, the football player, and now stepping into this new world. What did that feel and look like for you? How did you know? Or did you just act off of impulse in terms of your intuition? That is such a great question, Tracy. I think that... Well, I knew that I needed to do more because I was unhappy. I felt like I was, I got caught in a cycle of, and I think a lot of athletes get caught in this cycle when you're done playing to try to quickly uh, uh, attach your identity to something. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm not playing. I'm not tied to a football player. I got to attach it to something. So when I'm at family dinners and whatnot, I can say, you know, I'm working in this, this role or I have this job. And so it put me in this weird place of, not taking time to process and figure out what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be in the world, but just like, I got to get a check. My, my only purpose became I have to get out of my mom and dad's house. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I made, I started making great money. And eventually I hit this, this place where I felt like, I almost felt like it was my responsibility because I had found my stride and I was making great money and I was helping people. So it was a mix of wanting to, to reach back to help others. But also I felt that 
what I was doing, although career-wise it was great, I felt like I was being called to do more. And once you get that call, I mean, mm -hmm. you ladies know, you can't ignore it. Right. It's not something you just say, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll just go home at night and uh, turn on Netflix. It's, it was like, no, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do research on this. I'm going to start mm -hmm. putting together my curriculum. I'm going to figure out the best way that I can start serving. So I don't even know if that answers your question, Tracy, but that's what that's what comes to mind right now. I love it. And I love how you just kind of describe the feeling and just knowing that there was more. And you're right. I think a lot of athletes go through that process where, you know, you're you're empty in a place, but there's more for us to do. And so not just sitting in that, because when we look at the statistics and research behind athletes coming out of their their career, depression is high. Substance use is high. So people turn to other things to fill that void. So appreciate you kind of sharing what you felt from an emotional standpoint, because I think it matters. Thank you. And oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, no, go for it, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> I was just going to say I wanted to share that piece on the substance abuse as well, because, you know, at the time, this was 2013 when I graduated. So there was, you know, the whole concept of mental health and all that was not really as prevalent as it is today. So not only did I not understand what I was going through, I wasn't even trying to really process it. It was just, like you said, masking it. So I remember I had a lot of friends who I, I grew up playing ball with. And a lot of us from my high school, we went on to play D1 ball. And we found ourselves back home in our hometown. And we were all in the same spot like unemployed and confused and depressed and not knowing what was going on internally. Yeah. So there was a lot of drinking going on. I always say we had an extended college. We were, you know, we were out Thursday night through Sunday night, just finding something to get into just so we could distract ourselves from the fact that we were both living back. We were all living back at home with our mamas. So there was a lot of drinking <laughs> going on, you know, a lot of numbing, a lot of masking and not a lot of internal work, not a lot of self exploration. I just wanted to share that piece. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off, Tracy. No, no, buddy, this is for you, my friend. This is for all of us. We appreciate you kind of going into detail and sharing with us. And as you're thinking about this transitional period and as we're speaking to the groups that we're speaking to, you're right. It's not just about the sport, but so many people are in transition right now in life. Yes. Um, everybody, I think, this year has seen a big transition in some form or another. You've had to take a look at yourself, where you are right now. Is this on my path where I'm supposed to be? Should I make a pivot or adjust? What tips would you kind of give as people are kind of listening to you tell your story? What would you share for people as they are in transition? What are some things and strategies to do that in a way that kind of really speaks to self? The first thing that comes to mind is that you have to be intentional about it. And it takes work, I think. And I've been guilty of this in the past. You know, sometimes I think when we're in transition and we're looking for what am I supposed to do next? You know, what is what is my next mission? What's my next chapter in life? I think sometimes we, you know, sometimes we, we think we're going to be walking down the street and the clouds are going to part and God, <laughs> you know, angels are going to start singing and God's going to be like, hey, you're supposed to do this. You're right. like, Thank you, God. I've been waiting on this. Finally, what took you so long? But we have to do our part. You know, of course, we're going to get signs from, you know, uh, whatever you believe in. A higher power a lot of times does give you signs, but it's your responsibility to listen and develop it. I always say that your purpose has to be cultivated. Like, it's not just something that, you you know, you don't just discover it. A lot of people, including myself, used to think that way. You have to cultivate that. And some things that I recommend is, okay, so today is April 15th, 2021. I recommend projecting out and looking at where you want to be and dreaming big, too. Don't, you know, don't sell yourself short. Uh, I always say, like, okay, if today's 2021, you know, you want to look out to April 15th, 2026 or, you know, 2024. Where do I want to be? What do I want to be doing? Who do I want to be around? Not just what am I doing for a living, but what does my life look like? From the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, what does my life look like? Meaning, you know, relationships, career, uh, how much money am I making? Who am I serving? And really starting to kind of, like I said, be intentional and spend time on that and find clarity around what that looks like for you. And everybody's picture is going to be different. But if you can spend time on that, you know, closing your eyes, really seeing that, Writing things down, journaling is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm writing things down right now, just talking to you two ladies, and I'm, I'm gonna go back and look at these notes later, like, cause I'm sure there's gonna be some gems on here. So I think it, it takes being intentional, writing it out, because if you can see, the farther out to the future you can see about where you wanna be, that enables you to reverse engineer. And then mm -hmm. of course you gotta stay open along the way cause different opportunities are gonna pop up. Like I knew I wanted to be coaching and helping a lot of athletes, but the book came about, I stayed open to it, and the book has been great. It's helped a lot of people, and it's helped me in my career. So um, the last thing I would share is this is something I call three by three, and I, I believe I talked about this in the book as well, maybe not as in-depth, mm -hmm. but whenever I'm working with someone, uh, of course, you have to do your own work to figure out where you want to go, 
but the three by three means you find three people in your life and you ask them three questions. So three people who are super close to you, parents, grandparents, significant other, you know, it could be your kids. Um, and you ask these three people, these three questions, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And how do you envision me making a contribution to the world? Mm, and that okay. third question is the most important question because of course you want to know how the people, how the people closest to you see you, uh, meaning with your strengths and things you're good at, and then some areas of improvement, the things you can work on as weaknesses, but also how you envision, how they envision you making a contribution to the world is going to be huge. Like you will get some answers and I recommend you write all this down too while you're asking them because these will be memories for a lifetime when you hear these things yeah. and you can take that data, especially like, I remember my mom told me you're, you're great at listening to people and, and letting them know that they're understood. So although, you know, it's kind of a vague answer, but I'm like, you can see how that applies to my coaching now because mm -hmm. I'm able to hear what people are going through and meet from where they're at. So that's something I recommend people do, you know, take that data from the people around you and then spend some time gathering that internal data. You bring the two together and then you create, like I said, your, your purpose, your new mission has to be created. So I'll just leave it at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Taj, I'm so glad you shared that with us. I wanted to say, um, my dad, one of the things you talked about, my dad was a huge proponent of five-year plans. He told everyone, make a plan, make a five-year plan. But he also made sure to say to them, and if it doesn't come out the way you want, if things change, be willing to change that plan. Yes. Be willing to update that plan. Be willing, be open to changes within the plan, but have a plan. And I think that that, that speaks to a lot of what you said as well. I think the three by three also um, I've never done that and I'm so excited to go out and right. try to find out and hear. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that the people in my life have told me for years what they think my strengths are and they're loud about what I should be doing and where I should be, but I haven't been intentional about asking. So I do want to go ask. Um, and I do know, and I want to make sure I give you a chance. So you started out with your book and then you have a new one coming out again. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you for asking. The next book is called Athletes and Entrepreneur. And what that is, is a collection of stories of former athletes like myself uh, who have gone on to build businesses or are part of, you know, winning teams. So uh, my goal with the book, and I was sharing this with you before, Erica, my goal with the book is to show that next generation of athletes that it's not just LeBron James. You know, it's it's people who you may have never heard of before. I mean, look at all of us sitting here, like, you know, we're we're doing great things and contributing to the world and, and carving out our own lanes in the world. And I have a collection of stories like that. And I want to show not just, um, you know, people coming out of college or coming out of the pros, but I want children to read this book and be like, man, look at all these great stories of athletes who became entrepreneurs because I think athletes make great entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Um, and then after that, this might be coming out this year too. So athletes and entrepreneurs coming out in May, and then, of course, if you, you know, connect with me on social media and all that, I'll be posting about it once it's officially out. So next month, I don't have an exact date yet, but we'll be releasing that. And all of the uh, co-authors will be promoting the book as well. And then I just started uh, coming up with the outline for my third book, which is going to be called. This is the working title right now, okay. Surviving or Thriving with the question mark, like Surviving or Thriving. Mm. So it's a spinoff of Thrive After Sports, but it's more so for a general audience, kind of like we were just talking about where there's a lot of people going to transition, like we just shared. Mm -hmm. So the book is, the the basis of the book is everyone has a choice between if they're just going to survive through life or if they're going to thrive. Okay. So that's what I'm working on right now. Wow, wow. So encouraging in so many ways that you're showing people from youth to college to professionals to retire, wherever you are in life, there's so much more to give and there's so much more on the inside of us. So allowing that freedom for you to just kind of create and then giving a platform for others to feel confident to do so right behind you, that's a big deal. That's a big Thank deal. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. You just made my whole day with that. <laughs> I feel good. You You're know, making our whole I'm moment right now. It's right? Amazing. Hey. I appreciate you, you know, pouring it. I'm a pretty confident dude, but it never hurts to hear words of encouragement, you know yeah. what I mean, and affirmation. So thank you. Absolutely. And thank you. And I'm going to go just jump back because that three by three touched me as well. Like Erica was saying, I love how that third question 
asking the people around you, because I think we can, for ourselves, kind of know some things about us. But when you hear people on the outside, just like you just made that comment, on the outside speaking life or speaking something they see that you might, it might have been a blind spot to you Mm -hmm. for so long, or it may have been something that you were criticized for. It may have been something that somebody thought was silly that you, you do well. So to hear people on the outside say that this is what I see and how you can impact the world is a big deal. So thank you for sharing that tool. Uh, with our community. I think everybody can use that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm overdue myself. I need to, it's been about a year or two since I asked the people in my life. So I probably might do that today. Thanks to you. (laughs) Thanks to y'all reminding me. (laughs) That's awesome. And we would love to kind of hear as you are being a support for so many people that you serve, what ways do you currently not only pour into others, but what way do you take care of yourselves from a mental fitness perspective? How do you take care of self? I love this, and I love that term mental fitness that we all uh, that we all share, and we all recognize how important that is. Mental fitness to me means, um, like personally, I have to work out. It's not even about you know trying to look good with my shirt off and all that. That's that's a benefit. <laughs> that's an added benefit. But I work out for for uh, mental reasons. Like I, I notice the difference between if I don't work out and when I do. I have a totally different type of day. Yeah. Um, so to me, that means. Not only working out, taking care of yourself physically because the mind and the body are connected, right? So exercising is part of my mental fitness. Um, being intentional about what I'm allowing into my mind. Like I am not, I do not, you know, end the work day and turn on Netflix. Every now and then my lady and I, we might throw on a movie just to kind of relax and unwind. But for the most part, I'm super intentional about what, what goes into my head. I'm, I'm very intentional with every second of the day. So my unwind time might look like reading a book or listening to a podcast or something that's educational, something that's going to help me get 1% better for that day. Um, I do not watch the news. Anybody listening, please, when's the last time you watched the news and just felt like, you know, you were ready to take on the world? So I always tell people, like, you can be informed without watching the news. There's plenty of information. You can do your own research. Um, Mental fitness is huge, though, because I feel like if you don't have your mind, like, your mind is the engine that essentially drives you through life. So say that one more time, Tosh. You know. <laughs> say that one more time. All right. <laughs> For the people in the back. Hey, the people, people in the in back. back. <laughs> Your mind is the engine that drives you through life. I might have to write that down. Go ahead, my friend. Right you, you are just yes. Say that again. It's so true. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. And I think that uh, I'm glad we're having these conversations because I think for too long. Especially when we talk about athletes, I think for too long, yes. well, athletes and people of color, right? Yeah. That's that's what we're that's what we're really talking about here is that these conversations have been neglected for too long. Yeah. The yeah. people who need who need help who need help and therapy the most are the people who avoid it. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. We can't live like that anymore. So get your mental fitness up. Keep tuning in to shows like this, you know, and uh, protect your protect your mind, protect your energy, and protect your mind. It's it's very important. Love it, buddy. We got about uh, two minutes left. I would love for people to make sure they know how to get in contact with you. How do they reach you? Social media, websites, book, where can they find you? Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm pretty accessible. Uh, My website is TajDeshawn.com. All of my social media handles are on there. I'm more active on Instagram and LinkedIn than anywhere else. If you DM me, if you send me a message on LinkedIn, it may not happen right away, but I'll get back to you. Um, the book is available at thriveaftersportsbook.com, but I'm actually revamping the website right now. So even if you just go on to my, on to tajdeshawn.com, there's a book tab there as well. And I'll be updating that to start putting all of my books on there. Um, the podcast thrive after sports, same name as the book that's available on all podcast platforms, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search it up. Um, what else? Oh, last thing I like to leave people with, there's a link, uh, more like a button to schedule a call on my website. It's 100% free. I utilize that link. And I'm, I'm getting pretty busy these days, so I don't know how much longer I can keep that free link up there, just to be real. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting out a lot of books and things that I'm working on to help people. But as of now, there's a link on there. So if you are a former athlete, a current athlete, if you are the parent of a current or former athlete, I've had a lot of parents schedule time on, um, to speak with me. I do a free call anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. You can schedule okay. right on the website. Um, I've had a lot of people who they don't even need to like go through my eight week program or, you know, anything like that. We just have one phone call and sometimes they just need somebody to talk to just to get things off their chest. Or I'm able to talk to them for 30 minutes in an hour and get them pointed in the right direction. And it turns out they don't even need the full eight weeks. So that's the last part I would share on that. We can't thank you enough, buddy, for just sharing your message, your light, your passion. Erica, 
So good to see so you. So good to see you, Tracy. We want our Mental Fitness Matters community to go out and shine bright like the stars that you are. We will see you next week. Taj, thank you, buddy. Keep up the good work. Keep shining. <laughs>